So my name is uh, Juliano Martinez. I'm a senior sysadmin at Booking.com. And what I'm going to talk a bit today is our uh, path to adoption, right? So uh, we decided we would like to have uh, OCP, but we didn't actually know what was required, right? So when, when you go check things and you want to talk to people, uh, you hear a lot of good things, uh, but you never get to know the challenges, right? So uh, what I want to talk a little bit uh, here is about the challenges and learnings that we had. And, uh, and we, why, why we would like to use uh, OCP? Because we'd like to treat uh, servers as light bulbs. Uh, nowadays, it's not like that. So one of the ideas, it was, so we want to have, um, for instance, right? So you have a Leopard cave. So we would like to have interchangeable hardware, regardless of the vendor that we buy. So instead of having a set of chassis from one vendor, so let's use the names, right? HP and Dell. I would like to have a cage where I can actually change from one vendor to another without problems. Um, I have a uh, multi-vendor setup using the same-ish hardware. Uh, because although uh, we use the same hardware models, they are not the same, right? Because you will have different techniques and so on. And I can talk a little bit about interesting issues that we have. Uh, fewer buggy uh, value-added features. So uh, every time that you get a firmware update or you get a new BMC release from your vendor, uh, you get new bugs, right? So our hardware discovery relies on one XML payload from the vendor, and the less firmware that we got, it doesn't offer uh, the BMC MAC address anymore. And then a portion of our discovery started thinking that all of this hardware was broken. Uh, the good thing is that if we, don't, if we control the firmware release and the BMC software release for these things, we know that whatever we break, we don't need to wait a quarter to fix. Uh, and it comes to the freedom to patch things. And the challenge, challenges in learning, right? Uh, it started from the data center, the BMC, BIOS, and vendor themselves. Uh, yep. On the data center, so how's your GC being built, right? So you think, so I would like to have open compute there. And then say, okay, so now I'm gonna buy the whole rack, cool. And then you go to the data center, it actually doesn't fit the room because the door is not tall enough, right? So if you, are, if you plan to put open compute in a no data, data center, you also need to think about these things. Or you think, so I now, so, I, so they fix the door. Now I'm gonna actually order the fully populated rack with machines. Okay, and then you learn that this rack actually, it weights 1.5 ton. And although your data center room can hold this weight, um, the path that this hardware needs to be moved through, it wouldn't actually destroy the ground. Uh, yeah, so these, uh, these are challenges that you learn. And then you understand, right? So also uh, the power feed, right? So you think, so I would like to put, now I, I managed to get this rack internally. So I will plug uh, the energy. How, how does that work? Okay, so if you check all of the other racks, actually the power feed comes from the ground and you expect the power feed come, uh, to come from the roof, right? Uh, this also, uh, took a little bit, we got a magic, and it works now. Uh, but these, these things, uh, when you are looking, if there was a bit more of information, it, it, it would help. Yeah. A uh, really good thing about uh, that it was a learning from, from OCP, power usage, right? So we would like to, uh, to see how much power we can actually save in comparison with the hardware that we have. 
So we got the most powerful uh, model that we had available in our data center with 16 uh, blades inside and we use the high capacity, right? So this chassis, it went to 6.1 kV at full power. And in, in our OCP rack, what I did was to remove everything but 16 nodes to see how much power I could use, right? And the OCP rack at full power, it used 11% uh, less than, the, uh, than our uh, other vendor uh, rack, uh, other vendor chassis. So this actually was really good. Uh, I know that's not every day that you use full power, uh, but at least uh, we know that idle, it was around 42, 43%, and full, full power 10%. So if you are gonna use the whole, uh, the whole room at full power, you know that you have uh, 10, 11% uh, more capacity. Uh, BMCs. So we, we deal with, um, with nine different models on three different vendors with the BMCs. So this is a, a library that uh, my team started uh, this year. We open source because I understand that people that suffer with these things, they would like that as well. Um, and so what, what does integration mean, right, for us? Uh, it, it might sound weird, but you don't have an idea of how difficult it is to reboot a machine, right? Um, so across three different vendors, right? So some of them, uh, they require you to, so you want to PXC this machine through the network. So you issue via PMI, a PXC, and you reboot a machine. Uh, it doesn't work. And then you discover that it's a bug that's been there for years and after you reboot, you need to power on. The, the power on action will fail, but then PXC works, right? So what we did in this library is like to make things work in the same way across all of these vendors. So we usually we install like 200, 600 servers a day. Uh, and my team has four people now. So if 10% or 20% of these servers have problems, for us it's actually a big burden. Uh, with, uh, with the promise of OCP for us, actually it's really good that using OpenBMC, we don't, use, we don't need to use all of these things anymore, right? So I, actually you can expect the behavior to be the same regardless of the hardware because you are in control of the firmware that's running there. Uh, but with the models that, uh, that we got, actually uh, we didn't, we weren't able to use OpenBMC in these models because they are a bit old. Uh, we could if we, were, if we were to put a fork to implement that to Leopard Cave, uh, but I don't think that makes sense, right? So there are, uh, there are better, there's better hardware there for you to do and people had put their fork. Uh, so in this case, we, are, we, are, we actually we had to implement uh, the same actions uh, across these two different vendors. Uh, BIOS. So this uh, was all, is also interesting, right? So our, the way that our network is designed, you cannot share, you shouldn't share uh, for compliance reasons, the out of band and data network, right? And by default, um, the, the setup that comes with these machines, they actually they expose uh, one of the NIC to the OS, right? So your Linux will always see your out of band. Um, uh, it took a little bit of effort and so on. We, find, we found the options and now we actually, we are able to disable, um, to disable this interface uh, via BIOS with the XML automation. Um, before this machine gets provisioned and go to production. Uh, but then uh, what you notice, and it actually makes sense, I'll talk a little bit later, is that when you are to acquire this hardware, you should actually pay a lot of attention about OCP inspired, uh, OCP accepted, and uh, companies that tell that they are OCP. 
uh, because it's, it's not just because someone says that they are OCP, that all of these things will be compatible across, uh, across all of them. And that, that's one of the things that we, uh, we noticed, the vendor pe peculiarities. In this case, in one of the models, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't shut down the, uh, the BIOS, the NIC through the BIOS. We ended up, so actually we could shut down, but it would shut down the BMC altogether. So it wasn't uh, very helpful. Yep. And, and that's the thing, right? So uh, know uh, what you buy and from who you buy, uh, to be sure. So one of the other tests that we did, it was so, because we would like to make sure, right? So I have two Leopard caves. So it means that even though this vendor, they are not saying that they are exactly OCP, because they said that they sell OCP, I expected them to be interchangeable, right? So when I plugged, uh, the OCP inspired on this other vendor cage, it didn't fit, and vice versa. So my idea in the beginning that I could actually uh, just replace things around freely, if, if, I, if I wasn't paying attention before buying the hardware, it could be a big problem. Uh, so numbers, right? Uh, Can I say number of servers? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. So we have, we have a total number of servers, around 40,000 and something servers, right? And every quarter, uh, we have a huge uh, sum of new servers coming. It's not as big as uh, Google and Facebook, but actually it's, uh, it's a lot of work. So if if we can have these things inside of the data center and makes easier to move things around, uh, it's awesome, right? So when you are uh, buying these things, you need to, uh, to pay attention. Yep, and, and the conclusion, right? OCP is one of the shortest paths for, for light bulbs. Yeah, it, it is, right? You just need to be aware of all of these things when you are designing and make sure that you understand what, what are your requirements, right? Uh, the problems that I felt during the, the tryouts in our environment, right? So the BIOS, uh, it's now that tomorrow, uh, and we, I spoke before with Jemahi about that, and they are working on the uh, open system firmware. And this is awesome, right? Because then you don't need to deal with different configurations and things from, uh, from each vendor. This actually, so if, if you do automation on the hardware level, uh, because what, what we want, we, we want to make these servers behave like VMs, right? So you should be able to patch them in, in a streamline without a lot of problems, without manual intervention. So if we can use the same firmware across all of them, it's awesome because we don't need to deal with six or seven different models for each, each one that we have, right? Uh, OpenBMC is, uh, is required for vendor agnostic environments uh, because although your hardware is the same, the workload is the same, if you need to manage the automation and if you need to deal with a lot of machines uh, and you are using IPMI, so actually the IPMI on Open Compute is better from my other vendors. Uh, I was able to reboot machines reliably uh, using IPMI with, uh, with Open Compute. Uh, it's not true for the rest of the hardware that we have. And uh, the last thing is that read the specs, compare vendors before you commit, right? So check all of them, make sure that we are, you are getting is actually what you should get. Uh, it's not just because it's OCP and it's nice that it's following the accepted and, uh, and aspired standards. Yep. That's it. Any questions? Oh. Yes, so. 
Hmm? Oh, uh, if we manage to deploy OCP hardware in a colocation data center. So the, the thing that I mentioned at the beginning about the rack doesn't fit the door, it, it happened. We have the same issue without OCP. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing, yeah. yeah. So we, we managed, so uh, in our data center in Amsterdam, uh, we have this OCP rack sitting besides all of the other racks that we have. But we had these this very same issues. Uh, most of our racks, they actually, they don't come fully populated. Uh, OCP was the first test and DCC. And then these things happened, yeah. But uh, we got it there. Although it, it was one rack, and for this one rack, it's okay. Uh, but if the room that we have nowadays, uh, we wouldn't be able to use the same way for OCP. Nowadays, no, we have one rack. So I have like 30, uh, one rack and 33 servers. Uh, it's, uh, so these are the first that we bought to understand how it works, how it behaves, and how we could automate everything before getting more hardware. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. So uh, what I think about Redfish. Uh, Redfish is really nice. But I, across three different vendors. So my first implementation of BMC Lib, it was using Redfish. Okay, so one of the vendors, although the Redfish spec says you should answer back the host name of the machine, I didn't have a host name. And when I was calling actions like reboot, uh, power cycle, and PXC, I got even weird res weirder results than I had uh, with IPMI. So Redfish has, uh, has an API, I think it's awesome, uh, but it requires a, a bit more of maturity. Yeah. But the, the answers that you get, actually, so the document and the format is awesome. I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of OData. Um, we develop everything in Go, so OData is a nightmare. Uh, but it's uh, it's good in general. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You said you had um, one rack, thirty-two servers testing. Do you think you will um, replace a large percentage of your production servers over time with OCP? Yeah. So this this is uh, the nice thing when when you think about OCP. In our so if if you think that we keep the same rooms that we have nowadays. It's not a huge advantage, right? Because we need to replace uh, all the feed that we have and how we deploy. But if you think about a new room, that actually you can get it warmer, uh, higher temperatures, right? And we, we don't need to deal with all the gibberish of different vendors. Uh, it, is, it is actually one of the, uh, the goals. So um, if we tested doing the interchange between vendors, and if we if we think that the vendors should fix that, right? I I do think uh, so. I I tested, and tomorrow we have a meeting uh, with one of the vendors uh, to understand why it happened, right? So I also spoke with Meno from Circle B, and he said that between OCP inspired. And OCP accepted, it doesn't happen, that actually you can interchange without problems. Um, but these, uh, this is actually a strong push, right? Um, because the magic of these things is that if tomorrow, let's suppose tomorrow, uh, for some reason, uh, your vendor cannot deliver your hardware anymore and you need to buy a bulk uh, number of servers. If you need to replace all of your cages, you, you have a problem anyway, right? So every time, uh, this is what I think that it's really important, right? To read the specs, and if it doesn't follow, uh, you say, so you need to fix so that we can buy. Uh, this, this is our push. 
even even with uh, not OCP vendors, uh, we try to do the same things, right? Every time that we pick an API or something that it doesn't work, we keep bothering them uh, to get these things fixed. Yep. Uh, what files for the OCP regs do you prefer? Sorry, I... I Oh, actually, I will need to ask. It's the standard, the Facebook version 2 rack, so it's 2.3 or 2.3 meters. What do you like to have it smaller and which I believe you prefer? No, I think it's easier to have a slender. Okay. Make the doors higher. Yep. Cool. No more questions? Thank you. Sorry, uh, if, if you want to ask something more about OCP or ask me about our setup, uh, feel free to drop an email. Sometimes I take a bit to answer, but I always answer. Yeah. Thank you.